Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Shrek Game Today.com video, we're going to be discussing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We start things out with Intel, because the company are claiming the 8700K to be 11% faster than the 7700K, but a darn sight faster in multitasking, we'll get into that in a minute, and then the company have snapped up the B360 in retaliation to uh, AMD grabbing the B350 chipset name. Then we move over to Camp Green, because NVIDIA think that they have what it takes to tackle and conquer the crypto mining craze by supply and demand. And then we'll also finish with a smaller piece of NVIDIA news, and that is the Quadro P6000 is capable of rendering uncompressed real-time 8K video, which is honestly bloody impressive. We'll talk about that in a moment. But, as I said, the first things first is Intel and the 8700K, which is naturally on the Coffee Lake series of processors. So this information originated from, as a lot of stuff tends to, chip hell. And Intel are essentially training retailers in China. Basically, they're giving them the too long didn't read of the benefits of Coffee Lake over, let's say, oh, I don't know, their current lineup of processors. Now, according to the slide which was leaked to the internet, much to the disdain, I imagine, of Intel themselves, the i7 8700K is going to be 11% faster than the 7700K in single-threaded operations, which is pretty impressive, but not as impressive as the multi-threading gains. As if Intel are to be believed, we're going to be seeing an improvement of 51% better multi-threaded scores compared to the i7-7700K. This, of course, is thanks to two additional processors plus the natural IPC gains. What about the 8600K? Surely going to be very popular with gamers. Well, its performance jumps 19% compared to, of course, the 7600K, and its multi-threading score actually improves even further, 55%, which is absolutely bonkers. In fact, one can argue that the 8350K may also be very impressive for gamers. I'll talk about the specifications more in just a second, because its performance gets 17% better single performance, but 65% better multi-threaded. So why is this? Why is the performance jumping so much for those processors? Well, in short, because the leaks have been accurate with Coffee Link. So in other words, we see the 8700K with 6 cores, 12 threads, the i5, meanwhile, has six cores, although obviously does not have hyper-threading, whereas the i3 does, in fact, have, wait for it, quad-core. No, it doesn't have hyper-threading, but still, four genuine cores. So if these processors are priced competitively, it's going to be very compelling in the marketplace, and I'm very curious to see how the 8600K, the 8700K, and of course the 8300K are going to be priced when compared to Ryzen. Obviously, AMD at the moment definitely have the price slash performance advantage for most individuals. There are some workloads which uh, Intel do certainly slightly win on, excuse me. But this information certainly paints a very good picture for Intel. Obviously, as a consumer, your job is to, well, go and buy whatever company's hardware you desire, really. But it appears that the 8700K is going to be boosting up to about 4.3 gigahertz across all cores. And naturally, comparing the um, processor with the 7700K isn't too difficult. Because you could take, for example, the 7700K, look at uh, overclock performance of single-threaded applications. Uh, if the 7700K was overclocked to about 5 gigahertz, and you could start getting at least some understanding of how the 8700K is going to uh, function if we're talking single threaded applications. There are a couple of caveats with this. The first is what workloads are these? Are we going to see this across multiple workloads? So for example, are we just talking CPU-Z slash Cinebench? Are we referring to a whole plethora of stuff? So for example, on games where, let's say for example, you've got a GTX 1080 Ti and you're running, I don't know, something that's not particularly demanding graphically, are we going to see CPU bound scenario jump 11% in those instances? Well, of course, it's going to really depend. Multi-threaded, however, I'm unsurprised at those performance numbers. I kind of guessed it was going to be around 40 to 60% increase multi-thread because, let's face it, once again, you are looking at those additional processor cores, which two extra cores, four extra threads total, it kind of makes sense from a very um, layman perspective. 
Now, a slightly smaller piece of news, and that's putting it mildly, Intel will be launching the B360 motherboard chipset. Of course, AMD snagged the B350, so, well, there's not much that AMD could do, other, sorry, Intel could do, but to respond by grabbing B360. Honestly, I kind of didn't like the fact that AMD did this, because AMD also grabbed the X399 as well, of course, for the uh, Threadripper, and they also grabbed the B350. Now, I'm not, you know, criticizing AMD as in, like, you're bad individuals, but I don't like it because I feel it, for people who don't follow technology, like, super closely, I think it kind of adds a bit of marketplace confusion. On the other hand, Intel have definitely done some kind of shady stuff in the past, so it's... I can't blame AMD in that respect because, once again, I did do a video just recently on uh, Intel and some of the stuff they've done in the past, and honestly, this is nowhere near as bad as what Intel have done to AMD, but I don't kind of like it. I feel that they should have just left the naming conventions to Intel and AMD should have just grabbed their own. But, of course, that is just my personal opinion. Now, another interesting piece of news actually popped up from NVIDIA. A lot of folks do not like mining, and that's putting it absolutely mildly, if, well, my YouTube comment section is to be believed. But, it's not going anywhere. I mean, I, I was actually speaking to a vendor, well-known vendor today, actually I was speaking to Gigabyte, to be honest with you, um, because we actually, they've agreed to start sending us hardware after Gamescon, which is yay! So I'm really happy about that. In fact, I'm incredibly grateful that, uh, They've agreed to that, and I'm also incredibly grateful for you all to you know, be supporting us. And the chap that I was speaking to was really nice, actually. And he was telling me that some of the uh, miners in like Russia and other regions as well, they're, sh they're buying, like, you know, and to be fair, it's not like it's, I'm telling you anything like a revolutionary piece of news here, but it's like they're, they're buying truckloads of GPUs. We're not talking like two or three, which, yes, a lot of bedroom miners are doing, you know, they'll buy like three or four RX 570s or whatever they can get their hands on. In some cases, they're buying like thousands of them. Uh, in fact, if you do a Google at some point or another, you can actually find a group of miners actually hired a plane a cargo plane, or it might have been like a Boeing 747, I don't remember exactly, but let's put it this way, it was a pretty damn big plane. They actually hired a plane to transport graphics cards. I mean, just imagine that. Just think of the sheer quantity of cards that we're referring to here to actually mine this stuff. Anyway, um, NVIDIA obviously want in on this, and according to Jensen Huang, he said that uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain is here to say the market needs for it is going to grow, and over time it's going to become quite large. If he doesn't think it's large now, I, I dread to think what he feels it's going to be like in like 10 years' time. It's very clear that new currencies will come to the market, and it's very clear that the GPU is just fantastic at cryptography. And the last thing is that we say that a larger of a GPU company you are, the greater ability you can absorb the volatility. And because we have such volumes, we have the ability to rock and roll with the market as it goes. Obviously, he's taking a shot across AMD's bow here. AMD, for those who don't know, I imagine almost every one of you do, have typically been very much hand-in-hand -hand with the crypto craze. Like, th there was a reason, basically, that the RX... 500 servers or the 400 servers were pretty much like gold dust and still are pretty expensive. Well, well above uh, RRP or MSRP, I suppose, actually, to be more accurate. And if NVIDIA are able to tackle this craze, I actually might be okay with that, providing it doesn't impact the rest of the graphics market, because there is another story actually going around at the moment, and I'll quickly throw it in as a bit of a bonus, and that is the graphics memory prices are going to be surging about 30%. Obviously, that's bad if you, well, want to buy graphics cards. Uh, according to various graphics card components um, manufacturers, um, the price has gone up about 30.8% in August. So now they are 8.5 US dollars, so $8.50. And this is up from $6.5, so $6.50. And obviously this is also starting to impact, um, well, graphics card vendors, because apparently the reason this is happening is because Samsung, SK Hinux, and so on have allocated the bulk of their inventories to manufacturers such as servers and mobile handsets, which 
is the reason, support, supposedly anyway, that the price is starting to rally and start going upwards. Don't forget that Samsung are the largest supplier of graphics memory. They've got over 50% market share. I think it's like 55, 56, something like that. And then you've got SK Hinux and then Micron and the rest of the companies. So obviously that's kind of an owie. Um, and hopefully if NVIDIA are able to at least start supplying some of the graphics cards uh, more readily so that you don't need to worry. But basically if NVIDIA can improve their hardware for cryptocurrencies, that's obviously a good thing. I do have a feeling that this is possibly going to be for future GPUs. I wouldn't be surprised if we get like Volta-based GPUs specifically for mining, which I'd be fine with, honestly. Like, if they built specific architectures specifically for mining, I think it would be the best of both worlds. And, I, I you know, we all know that the issues at the moment with AMD and the drivers, because they've just released beta drivers, as I discussed like a day or two ago, which drastically improved performance of um, the AMD cards when it comes to cryptocurrencies. And I, I don't blame AMD. As I said, I'm not, I'm not uh, bad-mouthing AMD, and I'm certainly not having a thing against miners either. But I feel that this is, like, not a good situation for anyone because for miners, it sucks because, well, they're playing, they're paying way more than what they should be for a graphics card for A. And for B, they aren't getting the quantities that they need. For graphics card companies, it's kind of okay, but they're pissing off gamers. And gamers are obviously getting stepped on every single which way. So hopefully, if NVIDIA can provide this, it's going to be a nice solution for everyone because obviously it's going to mean that you know miners have better access to graphics cards. It means that um, gamers get somewhat uh, less pressure. Well, that's a theory. For all we know, it's just going to make the shortage worse. But I'm trying to look at it on the positive side anyway. And this is going to be the last thing with NVIDIA. And that is a story from FUDZilla.com. So, uh, this happened actually during the SIGGRAPH. And um, basically, it's a bit of a long story, but I'll, I'll link to it in the video description. But NVIDIA Quadro powers 8K video, and this is not compressed. The only compression, apparently, was from red camera sources. But after that, you can start to see the raw performance amount. This Actually, it was AMD made the claim that NVIDIA were using compressed file formats and according to Fudzilla they did testing and essentially they opened up file formats which NVIDIA used and also a format that I saw a video that AMD provided and they basically did a side-by-side -side comparison and once again this was running at 8k and you can see that the file ran absolutely perfectly in Adobe Premiere and that is very bloody impressive. Anyway with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.